Welcome to Flavored Enemy Regnum Batisho. The following program is intended for mature audiences only, so listeners' discretion is advised. Thank you, and welcome to Vayith University! Willow, you find yourself stranded on a lonely island in the middle of an endless dark sea. The sky above you is a deep and ominous shade of purple, while the stars glimmer with an eerie intensity that chills your bones. You suddenly realize that the island is not as empty as it seemed at first. The rocky terrain is crawling with ravens, all of them black as pitch and with a malevolent gleam in their eyes. They screech and caw in unison, their voices echoing across the sea like a haunting chorus. As you watch in awe and terror, a figure emerges from the horizon, walking across the water towards you. It is a child, but their appearance is anything but innocent. Dressed in black robes, their face shrouded in shadows, they exude an aura of dread that makes your heart race. In their outstretched hand, the child holds a sword made of pure darkness, glinting with stars that seem to shift and twinkle like malevolent spirits. As you take the sword from them, you feel a surge of power coursing through your body, as though you have become one with the night sky itself. With the sword in your grip, you turn your gaze to the surrounding islands, and the sight that greets you is both mesmerizing and terrifying. The mist surrounding them pulses with an evil energy, and the islands themselves are made of a material that you can't, can't quite discern. It looks like crystal, but its eerie glow hints at something far more sinister. The ravens take to the air, their wings beating in an otherworldly rhythm as they encircle you in a spiral of darkness. You know that this is more than just a dream. With a child by your side, and the sword made of the night sky, you stare at the infinite abyss around you, and feel yourself stir from slumber. As you awake in your bed, in your dimly lit room, it's maybe three o'clock in the morning, and the same recurring nightmare has woken you once again. What do you want to do? Does everything seem normal in my room? Give me an investigation check. Better at that than my mom, anyway. And yet it's still only an eight. Everything seems to be in order. What's the weather like outside? When I look out the window. You kind of walk out to the window and you see that it is it's raining P- pretty 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 rough uh, the winds are whipping in through the trees and you could see the boughs and branches uh, kind of swaying and bending back and forth uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna climb back into bed um, and I'm gonna try and go back to sleep you said it was three o'clock in the morning. Yes. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna try and go back to sleep. So you crawl back into bed, you cover underneath the blankets, you roll your face over to the side and sink your head into the pillow. It's cool to the touch and comforting. And the softness beneath you ushers you closer and closer tonight's embrace and as quickly as you woke up your eyes began to close before your shoulder plows into the wooden floor and you feel yourself roll over kind of in pain and agony from busting your shoulder on the floor and realize your bed is now gone everything else in your room seems to be just fine and it's the same but your bed is gone. 
the fuck? That is very likely said out loud. What the fuck? I am going to stand up and can I make another investigation check on my room? Sure, make an investigation check. Oh, that's better. That's an 18. Okay. Everything in your room is neat and orderly. It's exactly where it should be. The problem with that is, though, is that everything is exactly where it should be. And that's not how you keep your room. It's almost like this is someone else's concept and reality of understanding what your room is supposed to look like. Because typically at least one or two things in your room are not where they're supposed to be at any given point in time. But for some reason, here and now, everything is exactly where it's supposed to be. Minus the bed. Um, I have, I, I can't have this theory. And I feel like my wisdom and intelligence are high enough that Willow would also feel this way. So I want to make an insight check to see if this has anything to do with the, um, the Matron of Ravens. Um, sure. Make an insight check. That's a soft 20. If it is, if it does have anything to do with the Matron Ravens, this is something much more official than her teasing you or messing with you like she does sometimes. This is something more drastic, more heavy. This has more weight to it. She wouldn't mm-hmm. do this just, just to mess with you. But it very well could be that this is something that is her doing. Uh, am I wearing pajamas or do I have like normal clothes on? You are still wearing your pajamas that you went to bed in. Okay. Um, I'm going to go to my closet uh, and okay. pull on a hoodie. Um, okay. And then I'm going to go I'm going to go open my bedroom door. So you kind of throw your hoodie on, zip it up, and turn around to open the bedroom door. You swing it open, and you look, and you see about 30 feet out, you can see a small piece of pavement about 15 feet in diameter with a singular street light casting purple light down on the street itself. However, it cuts off at that at that diameter mark and drops off into the infinite nothingness that is beneath you. Uh, you can see just inky blackness as far down as you can see. Above you, you can see the beautiful night sky, the sc- stars glittering in all their shades, and no rain. So my room is just existing in this dark abyss. Yeah, your room is still right behind you. But the rest of my house is not here. Um, I'm just going to start... I'm going to take a step back from the... um, from the doorway so that I don't fall into the epic abyss. Mm -hmm. Um... And I'm just going to yell, Hello? Anybody? You feel something soft brush up against your ankle and kind of weave in between your legs as you look down and you see a small orangish-looking cat that you're fairly familiar with. Is this cardamom? It is. Ayo. Um. Mom looks up at you and meows. Do you know what's going on? Mom walks towards your door and in a puff of purple smoke disappears and reappears under the streetlight. Yeah, totally normal. That's great. Thank you for all your help, Cardamom. Appreciate it. Cardamom meows louder, trying to get your attention. 
Oh, you want me to step out into the abyss? Naturally. Okay. Um. What would I? What would I? Would it be an insight check to see if this is still a dream? Um, I mean, you can make an Arcana or a Religion check. Ooh. Let's do Arcana because I'm better at that. That's a nineteen. You are most definitely not within reality. Whether or not that means that you are in a dream in the dreaming lands or whether you are envisioning this as some sort of illusion you can be certain that this is not reality okay I'm going to take a deep breath um, and stare hard at cardamom Uh, I'm not going to look down I'm just going to stare at the cat and um, um, I'm going to say here goes nothing, and step over the threshold. As you do, you feel energy wash underneath you as a bit of street and pavement and cobblestone forms up underneath your foot as your foot drops onto solid ground. Oh, thanks, a doll. Oh my gosh. Okay. Uh, I'm going to no. glance down at Karmam and, and just say, well, now what? As you trek across the path and get underneath the light, uh, Artemom walks over to the light and places her paw on the uh, on, on the metal itself. You can see there's some kind of engraving there. I would like to read the engraving. It's some kind of symbol. Um, it looks like a downturned sword that's piercing a star and the light kind of breaking out from underneath it and it's kind of raised up instead of in, instead of engraved in it's it's textured over top like everything else is smooth around it hmm does this mean anything to me hmm Make a uh, make a make a religion check. I'm bad at that. That's a six. Nope. <laughs> this is a sword. Um, I'm gonna look at Cardamom. Does this mean anything to you? Cardamom meows. Mm, helpful. Um, I guess I'll stand up again. And, uh... I'm just gonna start, like, slapping my hands against my thighs in, like, a nervous tick. Just, like, gently tapping my thighs with both hands. Um... Mm -hmm. Now what? Cardamom. Now what? Cardamom kind of, like, nudges you back towards the pole. Should I touch the pole? Cardamom meows at you. Never before have I wished I spoke cat more than now. Um, hold on. Give me one second. What spells do I know? Yo! Willow knows speak with animals. I forgot I did that. Nice. (laughs) I'm gonna cat speak with animals. Uh, Come on, Willow. You, You can pick up on body language. Just push the, push the symbol. Push it. Push the mysterious sword symbol on the oh. mysterious street pole in the infinite abyss. Sure. Let's go. Let's do that. Oh, uh, yeah. Thanks for casting that. That that was mixing so much easier. Doesn't it just? Sorry, but, it took me so long. No, oh, yeah, you're, you're good. You're good. No worries. I mean, like, honestly, took your mom a lot longer. Uh, anyways, surprise me actually. Uh, yeah, you, you, you're. I can't speak about it too much, but you're going through something, and in order to get to the end, you have to keep progressing. I promise you, you're not in any danger, though. All right, if you insist, and I'm 
I'm gonna push the... I'm gonna push the weird sword symbol. Um, as you do, you feel the stones underneath you drop one at a time. As it spirals into a staircase leading downwards. Great. Follow the spooky stairs in the infinite abyss. Sure, why not? Hey, Cardi, you want a ride? I'm just gonna hold out my hands. See if Cardamom wants me a carrier. Uh, sure. As Cardamom jumps up, polymorphs into a raven and nestles on your shoulder. Perfect. Alright, down the stairs, yeah? Uh, yep. Just down the stairs. And away we go. I'm going to walk down the stairs. As you walk down the spiral staircase leading down, you reach a point where the stones become older. What was once surface street and asphalt and pavement and electric lights slowly starts to fade into magical light and older stones heavily laden with moss and scuffed blackened and wet as you walk further and further down everything around you becomes older the air the stones the water until you reach the bottom of the staircase two uh, torches light on either side of the wall wash in purple flame and at the end of the room that you enter you can see a statue of a, maybe a teenage young adult boy black hair kind of falling just to his chin just to his jawbone area black wings unfurled on his back and a very familiar looking sword of night stuck into the ground but something seems off about this the statue itself isn't like a isn't a it's not in a pose of her heroism or a pose of strength or solidarity it's not an honorable pose now the statue shows arms outstretched the sword pierced into the ground and the pain of a face in pain as if capturing the last moments the end of this young man's days do I recognize the young man? Uh, you haven't really moved further in. So if you want, you can go and get closer and investigate. I'm just going to glance at, at Cardamom and, and say, you're, you're sure I'm not in any danger? No, you're not in any danger. And I'm going to walk forward towards the statue. <laughs> And I'd like oh. to investigate it to see if I recognize anything. Ooh, that's a 23. Um, so it's very intriguing. Like, it's very well done. Very, very beautiful architecture. Um, as a matter of fact, it's almost eerily eerily done and on you can tell the difference between the statue itself and the dais that it's placed upon the dais is very obviously hand carved but it's nowhere near as intricate as the actual statue oh my gosh what, is on, this statue like a real person cardamom is silent should I should I touch the sword? Eh, more silence. That's great. Okay. I'm sorry, Willow. I'm not allowed to help here. 
Um, I'd like to cast an Arcana check on the sword to see if there's any, like, magic protecting it or anything. Ugh. That's only uh, a 14. It doesn't... It doesn't look like there's any kind of magic placed upon what you're seeing. Um, it looks like there might have been old magic at one point. But... It's not dangerous. Almost like, almost like a, a scent of magic that's long since gone. Mm. Um. See, Cardamom, this is stupid, and here's why it's stupid. If I touch the sword, listen. My dad touched the sword, and he had to make this big old confession. And then he had to go off and save the world. So if I touch this sword... Listen, I don't want to be in charge of saving the world. Maybe saving the world is not for me. Just look at it. Just take a look at everything. You don't have to touch anything. Just look. Alright. I would like to look closer at the sword. Um, so, kind of going over the sword, you see that it's very intricately carved and beautiful. Uh, you can see the depictions of the, the of the stars kind of gleaming in it. Uh, even though it's made of all stone, you can tell that that was beautifully done to try to encapsulate that. Um, and as you're kind of walking around, kind of checking it out, um... You see at the back of the dais, um, you see some words that are written. Um, it's in older language. Uh, what languages do you speak? Uh, probably not that one. Um, let me check real quick here. Where are my languages? There they are. Um, I speak common, giant, and sylvan. Hmm. Why do I speak giant? <laughs> Never mind. Moving on. Sorry. Um, you don't recognize a language, which is odd because you definitely understand what it says. And it says this. The knights of darkness guard these halls. And those that stand against good will surely fall. Well, those that stand against good will surely fall. You see, Willow, you are in this, the headquarters of an old group of knights called the Carries. It is my mistress's hope that you look for this place again and contemplate rebuilding that group. Me? The Knights of Darkness, huh? Yes. Also called the Carries. That's with a K, by the way, Velo. The Carries, huh? Then who exactly do I rebuild this fantastical group with? It's up to you. The Carries once stood as children of night and darkness. Descendants of Aedes here. And his friends. One of the first immigrants to Vittore. Wow. That's... That's a whole... This isn't a destiny, Willow. You aren't preordained to do this. This is merely a request. Think about it. And see it for yourself. The original survivors who built Douglas were not the first to come through there. As you wake up abruptly back in your bed, the sun is peering down at you, and there is a 
small knock at your door as a package slides underneath the door and you hear some faint garbling about having to make it to the library from behind the door. Um, was that... I'm, I assume that was Briar? Yeah. Thanks, Dad! Uh, um, I'm going to get up and get the package. Um, so you see that it's divided into two parts inside the package. On the left-hand side, you can see a um, like a black uh, collared jacket. It's got um, these kind of like uh, silvery filigree near the near the corners of where the where the buttons meet, um, and is very very fine silkish quality. Um, and on the other side, you can see a small box that has, um, tiny little pastries and a raspberry sauce. Um, and the pastries are, like, dusted in powdered sugar, and there are also a set of chopsticks, so you can pick up the pastries and dip them into the, into the, uh, raspberry sauce. Uh, I am immediately going to, I'm just going to throw the jacket onto my bed. Um, in typical haphazard teenage style. Mm -hmm. Um, and I'm just kind of like completely neglecting the chopsticks. I'm going to grab one of the pastries, dip it in the sauce, and shove it in my mouth. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, it's, it's, it's pretty messy, and the, and the, the sauce is actually really warm to touch, but like, it is absolutely delicious. It, it it tastes like somebody took a jelly donut and raised it up to like top scale and then made you eat it differently than a jelly donut would be. Um, I'm just gonna yell really loudly and I'm gonna say thanks, Dad! Um, even though I've already thanked it before. You hear, you hear some grumbling from, uh, from uh, downstairs about how early it is and the door jingle and the keys lock inside the lock. Um, um, as I munch on another, I'm going, I'm going to be slightly more delicate, but still without using chopsticks, eat another one of these pastries. And then as I'm like licking my fingers, I'm going to go to my closet and see what I can find to pair with this fancy, fancy jacket. Um, you, you see that you got, uh, you got a ding text message on your uh, on your cell stone from from your dad what does it say as you open it up you you can see uh what avalon put in chat it says, uh you're welcome honey so sorry i can't make it for orientation we'll teleport back after i deal with this azurian issue do you send any reply um i am going to I'm going to reply with, um, do what you gotta do, I'll give you a full report when you get home. Um, you, you piece together a a pretty, pretty good outfit. You get like this, uh, this, um, plain white t-shirt and these frayed black jeans. Um, and then these high top, uh, sneakers as well. Um, are they bright li- red? Because in my oh. head, these speakers are bright red. They are bright red. They are bright, bright okay. red. Um. Uh, and you see that uh, your your app on your cell stone pops up and says, "Good morning. Would you like to download tattoos for today?" Yeah, sure. All right. Pick from one of these designs. These are the free ones for today. And there are four tattoo designs, uh, and you can choose to place them on the side of the face, on the forearms, or the back. Um, and the four tattoo designs are um, a splotch of butterflies on watercolor, um, a 
Raven pecking out an eye off of a corpse. Um, a set of uh, a set of old Montaminar runes that kind of wrap around as bands on the arms. Um, or the final one is a just the Adela's logo. Um, well, let's go for some butterflies. Right. And where do you come? Um, it can be anywhere. Uh, uh yeah, basic, basically anywhere. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'd like to stick them on my, like, on my chest, kind of over my collarbone on the right side. So they're, like, kind of peeking out through the neck of the t-shirt. Okay. Um, so you, you see that as you kind of pick up your cell stone, click that one and confirm, you see that's kind of like, um, these small little, um, these small little tiny little, uh, nanobots, uh, arcane nanobots kind of shoot out, scoot up your arm and lay down, um, on, on your, that area and kind of pattern themselves like that. Um, this is a kind of a light version of the the nanotechnology uh, uh, flows that are being pushed out right now. Uh, so they just kind of sit there, it you and it feels completely normal. You don't even you're not even going to wear that they're there. Lovely. Um, to to make them more obvious, I'm going to I'm going to um, grab a pair of scissors and cut slits in the neck of the t-shirt. Um, mm-hmm in kind of like a v-shape down to the center of my chest okay um and just like like it kind of destroys the t-shirt but hey it looks cool and you can but see like, the cool watercolor butterflies but like oh, like oh like almost like a completely deep v cut yes okay um so yeah you you get all you get all your stuff and you hear the you hear the doorbell ring you hear like the long pull of the strings you got you got one of those like pull string doorbells at your house and it rings throughout the house um and you hear uh oh i'll be right there one moment please as you hear your your butler bucket starting to walk from the kitchen all the way out to the uh bucket to the, uh, yeah He's starting to walk from all the way from the kitchen to the uh, to the front door, and you know you were expecting some of your friends to meet with you to head to orientation. Um, and I've still got a, I've still got to take McKenna with me, right? Mm-hmm. All right, I'm gonna head out of my room, go grab the jacket, head out of my room, um, and head down to the foyer to see who's here uh you see that uh mckenna is in this um simple uh green dress that's just kind of extremely like extremely like um what's the word i'm looking for here very um conservative like all the way up to like the neck hugging the neck and then all the way down to the ankles and wearing some very simple uh very simple black shoes her hair is kind of pulled back into a bun in the back of her hair and she is um, sitting on the bench in the foyer kind of just tapping in a rhythm trying to like calm herself down Uh, when you get down there and you can see Bucket has made it halfway across the house but still has a lot of ways to go in order to get to the front door. Okay, Bucket, I'll grab the door. You, 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 sh- you sure, Miss Willow? I'm right here. Don't worry about it. Okay. Oh, um, I never got to ask because you're almost always in your room. Am I still using Miss Willow or is there something else you would like me to use? Uh, just Willow or Wills is even fine. You, you don't right. need to use Miss. It's fine. Uh- all right, Wills. He kind of snaps and gives you two finger guns. Later, Gators. <laughs> he heads back to the kitchen. What a strange, strange man. Um, I'm going to turn to 
gonna turn to McKenna. Um, how are you doing, kid? You ready for day one? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I'm ready. <laughs> Nervous, but I think I'm ready. Well, you're looking pretty good. Do you do you need any any weird accessories? Because I got you covered. Uh, no, I I don't I, don't, I really wouldn't like to draw more attention to me. You know, I'm I'm already gonna be the youngest person there. I don't really, you know. No, I understand. Don't worry about it. And listen, listen. The age doesn't matter because you know that I have your back, right? <laughs> yeah. And, you know, if you need help with your math homework, I've got you. This 12-year-old 12 this, this 12 kind of looks up at you. We don't need to talk about math. It's fine. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I'm going to open the door. Um, as you open the door, uh, you see a entourage of people that are here to, to meet with you. Uh, <laughs> you see, um, Rebel is here. Uh, you also see that Dorian is here. And you, you also see that River is here. And Rebel kind of speaks up and says, Hey, Willow, are you, uh, you ready to go? Uh, yeah, just about. Mm -hmm. Um, and I, I'm gonna... I'm gonna turn back to to Maketa. You sure you're ready? Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm I'm ready. All right. Um, oh, uh, yeah, yeah. um, she kind of like grabs her bag and slings it over her shoulder. She like flicks her wrist and like shoots her fingers out in order to cast some sparks off of them real quick. All right, I'm good. Let's. All right, Bucket, we're leaving. I'm just going to yell real loud through the house. All right, well, I'll uh, lock up and, uh, you know, I will have those, I will have those, uh, that, uh, what am I making for lunch again today? Oh, yeah, uh, I'll have that pickled herring ready for when you get back. Thank you. Uh, as uh, Dorian kind of walks up and Lings his arm around you. Says, "Hey, Wills, you uh, been been a while since I've seen you. How are you doing?" Um, I'm gonna shake off his arm and take a step away. I'm hmm. I'm fine. I don't know why you're here. Oh, come on! I'm one of your closest people. I just wanted to make yeah. sure you're doing okay. I am Dorian, I am just fine. You are welcome to see yourself to school on your own. Hey, I'm not one to intrude, fair one. I'll split off if you want me to. God damn it. God damn it. Um, and Willow's just going to kind of look away, wrap an arm around McKenna and, and lead the way down the path down the street, I guess. Are we walking? How are we getting to school? You're I'm walking. You're, you're walking up there. Um, as uh, Dorian kind of uh, starts to walk off in an opposite direction, he looks back at you and just smiles really calmly and warmly. I'll see you around, Willow. Yeah, definitely that. As you, Rebel, River, and uh, McKenna start walking up towards the uh, university ward. And River kind of looks at you and says, I really don't know why you put up with him. Listen, it's not something that needs to be spoken about uh, with current company. And I just kind of gesture to McKenna. Oh, Real yeah. I mean, come on. McKenna's going to college with us this year. She's bound to hear worse. I mean, you should see the party that I was at last night. I'm pretty sure that Nyx is still passed out there. 
Oh no. Oh. Last I saw, they were swamped and, uh, well, completely buried in people. <laughs> that sounds like Nyx, actually. I mean, uh, as far as Dorian goes, he uh, he has his uses. Mm, Minimal mm. though they are. Mm -hmm. What kind of person would I be if I did not take advantage of them now and again? Uh, you know, that's fair. And uh, McKenna kind of looks up and says, what is he like? Like a really good like tutor for like history or something like no he's not really good at that maybe music i guess but you're good at music too so like what do you even need him for um uh poetry and it just kind of like slips out of my mouth and the second it comes out you can tell that willow like wishes it had not <laughs> rebel, rebel kind of like laughs word vomit rebel kind of laughs from the front of the group says <laughs> is our or is the recitals that good willow Oh, for the love of the doll. <laughs> hey, um, well, I'm sure, I'm sure River wouldn't mind hanging out with y'all on the way rest up. I gotta, uh, I gotta go meet up with Mina and make sure everything's good there. You know how it is. Yeah, of course. Damien's been hounding her, and so I gotta make sure that some stupid shit doesn't happen, you know? Naturally. Throw a left hook for me, if need be. Oh, absolutely. Um, and, uh, you take care, okay? And come, uh, come, come meet up with me at the, uh, at the dorm rooms when you're, when, when you're done. We'll, uh, we'll talk, yeah? Yeah, sounds good. Alright. And he kind of looks down at McKenna, kind of sits like like kneels down a little bit and says and you be that total badass that you are and kick everyone else's asses when it comes to education because we all know you're going to be the smartest person at this college all right kid she kind of smiles and ducks behind you it says mm -hmm. all right well i'm out of here see you guys later see ya as he walks off, pulls a uh, salamander light from his from a, from a pack, and lights it, and walks away. Um, he swing his foot over his motorcycle. It's parked off the edge of the road, and zooms up the university ward. You guys are still walking. Rivers like, huh. So, are you kind of uh, groups you thinking about joining? Any of them? I know you're not really a join up person, but you might like it. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. Sorry, can I just confirm? Is this River or Rebel? River. Rebel. Re Rebel, just left, Re right? Rebel just left. It's just you, River, and okay. McKenna. Stuck with River. Interesting. Um. I'm gonna put myself in the middle, um, with Willow, with McKenna on one side, River on the other, um, and kind of shrug. Yeah, I don't, I don't really know what kind of kind of groups they have. And joining a group isn't really my thing. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think I get what you mean, but like, you know, college is about making friends and, you know, making those connections, right? Like, it's not all about learning. And McKenna, like, <laughs> like, almost scoffs. It's like, no, no, college is all about the education. I don't know what, like, you think this is some kind of social club? <laughs> Keep on keeping on, McKenna. That's exactly the thought process that we want you to have well it's a stepping stone right like from here you you get uh everything that you're wanting to get done so that you can succeed on the outside at least half of succeeding as a person is the connections that you make with people right 
So I think it's really important. You should at least check them out. Like, don't get me wrong. I'm not really a big crowd or group of people person anyways, but... I don't know. I'm thinking about joining at least one group, you know? Which one? So that I can stay clear of it. <laughs> uh, I'll be honest, I was thinking about battle bots. It might be cool to build something there. I wish I could say that you're wrong, but... Yeah. Battle bots does sound... interesting. Right? Oh. <sighs> All right, it looks like here we are. As you guys start to walk up the the side of the uh, of the uh, orientation um, way, where like they have all like the stalls set up for individual organizations and groups, you can see stalls for Mashbat, Blood Rush, Airball, um, Battle Bots. The Dina Don fan club, uh, <laughs> model building. Uh, you can see there is the school newspaper, the drama club, um, filmmaking crew. Um, you can see that there is the the school store at the end. Um, there is all manner of things. You can see the school band that's having having like a little roster sheet for people who are interested in signing up. Um, so. What do you do as you're walking up? And you see McKenna is already starting to walk over to the chess club table. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to rush after McKenna real quick and, uh, Kenna, Kenna, hey, hey, do you, are you comfortable going up to all these people by yourself or do you need, do you need some hefty backup? And I kind of like flex. Hey, hey, well, uh, like, thank you. But if I'm going to be here and living here and going to class here, I can't have you with me all the time. I got to I got to practice doing this by myself, you know? But I promise that if I run into trouble, <laughs> I'm going to come running after you, okay? You you've got your cell stone, right? Yeah, yeah, I do. If you need anything, I'm a text away. Okay. All right. Anything uh, at all. Uh huh. All right. <laughs> go, go talk smart shit with your smart friends. <laughs> okay. All right. And you go, like, hang out with your friends too. I'm sure that they're around here somewhere. She kind of looks around for Iante and Nix. I'm sure they've got to be here somewhere. I'll find them. Don't worry. Um, as she walks off towards the, the chess club table, um, Diver kind of looks over at you and says, Well, I made sure to get you here, and, uh, if you need anything from me, you can, you can ask, but I'm gonna go and, uh, introduce myself to some people. Yeah, you, you go do that. I'll be fine. All right. See you, Willa. See ya. As River walks off, and you're left there standing alone. Um, before I go to a table of any kind, I kind of want to just look around to see if there's anybody else that I recognize in the in the plaza. Um, make a perception check. Doo, 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 doo. Oh, that was almost a nat twenty, and then it was a four. Hmm. I know nobody. I am alone. All by myself. That's not entirely true. Oh. Um, as you're kind of walking around, you see someone that you're familiar with from from high school. Mm -hmm. Uh you have you didn't like you didn't like really get to know them a whole lot, but like, you, you consider yourself friends. Uh, you see uh, Tanfin. She's got long, kind of dirty blonde hair, tattoos across her face, and a sword across her back, leaned up against a uh, a, a, a lamppost um, away from the uh, 
rest of the stands and stalls. Uh, I'm gonna approach Tanfin, give the give her give her a wave. Oh, uh, hey Willow, what's what's up? You, How about you're... all this chaos, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're telling me. Uh, no, I, I'm thinking about going checking out the Adventurers Guild, but to be honest. So is everybody else. And I'm wondering whether or not it might just be worth it just to not, you know? It is pretty crowded over there. Yeah. Well, how, how are you doing? Did you get your did you get your sister here? I think you were saying something about that on on port, right? You said post something about that? You and your sister going here now? Oh, yeah. Yeah, McKenna's and I point over at the chess club table where... Um, where McKenna's standing, talking animatedly about chess, I assume. She's she's talking smart shit with other smart people. Yeah. Yeah. That's never been my my forte. <laughs> I can play chess, but holding my own against McKenna is something else. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, do you want someone to walk with? Yeah, sure. That'd be great. All right. Uh, one second. And she kind of grabs her bag and slings it over her opposite shoulder um, and walks away from the lamppost. Can you go on your perception check? Sure. That's better. That's a soft 20. You recognize this lamppost. It's Does not it have a carving of a sword it, it, on it? It's not the same purple light, but it's the same exact design as the one that you saw in your dream or not dream last night. Does it does it have the sword engraving on it? Do you like go back to like look or investigate or anything? Um yeah, I'm just going to just like suddenly stop in my tracks and then start speed walking back to go investigate this light post like a total weirdo you kind of swing around it and your your hand kind of catches the lip of that insignia and Tanfin kind of looks at you and says hey you okay yeah yeah I have you ever noticed this and I'm going to point at the at the sword uh, the lamppost. You know. Yeah, yeah it's, it's it's a it's a pretty pretty nice lamppost. I was leaning on it, Willow. Right. It. You know. It's probably. I think I'm still tired. Let's let's go head over to um. Um, where do I want to go? I don't know where I want to go. Hold on. Is there a book table? Uh, there, there is, there is like a, a a table that's like denoted towards like, 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 like a book club, like reading, and there's also a table of people who are interested in helping out in the school library. Uh, we're gonna go to the book club table, um, not the library table. I'm just gonna point. I'm like, let's just go, uh, this way. We're gonna go this way. Uh, as you as you get over there, um. You see that there is a girl with like short black hair. She's got like a long pointed witch's hat on, and she is smoking a cigarette underneath the underneath the table and reading one of the books. She's like, oh, hey, looking in, joining, book club thing. Yeah. Uh, maybe. What kind of books do you read? I mean, kind of read a little bit of everything. I mean, I mean. You know, fiction, non-fiction, manuscripts, ancient scrolls, hot, smutty romance novels, you know, everything. All the, all the good stuff. Well, I mean, that kind of sounds up my... What do you think, Tanfin? You, are you into you into t t books and, and reading? And I'm, I mean, like, super awkward right now because of this whole lamppost situation. I mean, yeah, I, I like books. Do you... Do you want to sign up for the book club together? Oh, and uh, yeah, my name's Ingrid, by the way. I figured you probably want to know that. 
Ingrid, oh. it, uh, it's good to meet you. I'm I'm Willow. Nice to meet you, Willow. And Tanfin. Well, I mean, you can see here, this paper here, we've got the books that we have planned for the next semester. We vote every semester on what we're going to read the next semester. Uh, so, last year, before summer started, we voted on the books for this this school year. Um, so, I mean, we got a pretty good, pretty good wide variety. And, you know, we meet on, we meet on, uh, Kaelin Days at about 7 p.m. Hmm. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stare at the list of books. Mm hmm And how many, how many books would you say are on this list? There are four books on that list for the semester. There are exactly four. Hold on. Huh. I've only actually read one of these so far. Huh. Uh, did you read the, uh, did you read this one uh, from Slime with Love? It's a pretty good one. It's really That's hot. That's the one. How did you know? I mean, because it's, like, really hot. Like, everyone's read that one. Oh, it's so I've good. E I've even heard they're making a movie adaptation. You have? I haven't heard that. That's weird that I would not have heard that. Right? Like, I wonder who they're gonna get to play the slime. Like, you gotta make sure it's a hot slime, and that's that's a tough find nowadays. It really is. It really is, and especially they've got to live up to the bar scene. You yeah, know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like the way that they danced like like you cannot describe a more sensual way for a slime to dance with someone and the, the word way is perfect it really is and mm -hmm. and the way the slime doesn't doesn't settle on just one partner right oh yeah no 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 yeah, no perfect like we need more representation like that in our books and movies we really do mm -hmm. you know what i am gonna sign up what do you think tanfin uh, yeah, sounds interesting to me. She kind of uh, follows suit and writes her, her name and cell stone number down. All right, well, I'll send you a text with our first meeting date. And here you go. Here is the book supply list. These are the books that we're reading. Um, if you don't, if you can't buy the book or find the book before the first day... We might have some beater loaners that we can we can give you. All right, perfect. Thank you so much, Ingrid. Yeah, yeah, no problem. Um, and uh, if you need anything, you can shoot me a text too. Here's my cell stone number. Oh, oh perfect. And I'm also a potioner too. So, like, if you ever need potions for anything, come to me. Potioner, that's wicked. Mm-hmm. Um, all right. Uh, well, I'm gonna get to the next people in line. If you're, uh, if you're cool with that. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, no problem. Yeah. Um, and Willow's gonna kind of move away. Um, and Tanfin kind of looks at you and says, "What's going on? You seem weird." Not, I. Uh, I just I had this dream. Or not a dream, uh, but I was wasn't awake. I don't. That lamp post was in it. I don't know. I don't know. Are you saying that lamp post was in it? I didn't say that. Did I say that? I yeah. I think you did. Like. Was it, like, a particularly spooky lamppost? Like, I don't get why you'd remember that particular detail. Uh, okay, L come here. I'm just gonna grab her by the arm and drag her back mm -hmm. over to the lamppost. Mm -hmm. Um, and I'm gonna point at the sword insignia. Like, can you- can you see this? Willow... It's a lamppost. Like... Do you need some more sleep? Do we need to, like... Like, I don't know, like, maybe get, like, a a makeup day so you can come do the rest of the stuff, like. If I run my okay? hand over, 
If I run my hand over the the insignia, I can feel it, right? Correct. Like it's raised up. Yep. All right. I'm going to grab her hand and I'm going to rub it over the insignia. Uh, rubs it over and it looks at you and says, uh, uh, What are you doing? Can you feel it? I mean, yeah. No, not the lamp post. The love of the doll. Not the lamp post. Okay. There's a sword. A really tiny sword. Not a sword you can use. It's like a like a carving. Okay. All right. Well, I can tell that this means a lot to you. But I promise you, I can't see or feel it. So either right. someone's messing with your head, or I'm not allowed to see whatever it is you're seeing. Right. I I believe you, though. Like, I don't think that you're lying to me or anything like that. So, what you say we head inside and... Listen to the headmistress speak and get our dorm room assignments. You take some time to chill and think about it. I mean, it's, it's a lamppost. It's not going anywhere, right? I, I mean, I hope not. That would be extremely disconcerting. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I guess it could be a mimic. <laughs> That's, and, and, and save us all. I mean, you're the one with the sword, right? So you, you could take it. I don't know. I've heard you're pretty good in a fight, too. Eh, I'm not that bad. Um, yeah. Just well, uh, just one last thing uh, before we go. I Is mm -hmm. there a... Is there, like, a... Pride table of some sort? Uh, there is. There is a, like, a... Like, a pride organization. Um, but they're they're not, like... They're not like uh, a club so much. Um, it's like part of the. They have like a public outreach club that's like consists of people who want to go out and do like volunteer events and protesting and stuff like that. And they're a, they're a part of that club, but they're not the whole club. Um, I'm gonna go over to to that table um, and sign up to be a volunteer. Uh, you kind of head over there. Um, you see, um, you see Holly behind the uh, behind the counter. It's like, oh, uh, hey, hey, Willow, Holly. Well, Willow, Earth How to Willow. You? you good, Willow? I'm I'm great. Um, and I just kind of look side eye at Tan Finn. Um, yeah, I'm I'm good. Okay. So, you looking to sign up? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I'm gonna kind of lean one hip on the table. Cool. Um, so, uh, right here, you write your you write your name down in this column, your cell stone number down here, and then this empty box on the end, you can write down what kind of events and causes you'd be willing to protest for. Oh, perfect. Thank you. Mm-hmm. And then we kind of help to like organize those into like events and groups and people so that everyone can kind of come together for those kinds of things. That's awesome. I'm, I, mm -hmm. you know, it's really great that you, that you do this. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, to be honest, a lot of it's my, 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 my glitch streaming, the money I'm getting from that is able to actually help fund a lot of this. Like it takes a lot, it takes a lot of gold in order to actually, you know, kickstart some of this stuff off. But, you know, I, I can imagine that it would. And, um, and I mean, my, I don't, oh, this is awkward. I, oh, my parents are always down for a good cause. Huh? I could get you more funding if you need to. God, that's awkward. <laughs> uh, well, tell you what, why don't you work on maybe joining up and putting down on there for a charity event. I mean, your parents could host, right? You could organize, and we could, you know, t 
talk about the things that we want to make better about Vittore and about Avandra. And we could, you know, use that as a platform. I mean, your parents are both hugely respected in the, in the Avandran community. Like, it would be a big deal, honestly. I could absolutely get them to do something like that. It would not be hard. <laughs> well, you put, put that down there. Uh, put your cell phone number down. Oh, and um, by the way, I'm supposed to be meeting up with some people at... Um, at the, the ice creamery, like after orientation and everything. Um, a couple of group people and stuff like that. Uh, one of my new friends, uh, Vlux, is going to be there, fellow streamer. A uh, fantastic person. Um, so we kind of all planned on meeting up there. It might be good to get yourself a large group of friends, huh? Yeah, that sounds, that sounds really fun. Thank you for the invite. Sure, sure. Um, you can shoot me a t text on your cell phone when, when you're done. I think you still have my number, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Definitely haven't lost it. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Alright, uh, oh, shoot. Okay, I gotta get into the- I gotta get the rest of these people. Um, well, it's good talking to you, Willow. You too, Holly. Thank you. Hey, <laughs> bye. Bye. Uh, Tanfin's kinda like, finishes signing up and walks aside with you and it's like, Ugh, a lot of energy for one person. I, you know, I don't hate it. Um, well, it looks like they're getting ready to start the, uh, orientation. Wanna head inside? Yeah, let's head in. Um, as you guys are walking, Willow, can I get you to roll me a perception check? Um, uh, that's an eight. It's just enough. Just, that was literally the DC I set. Uh, as you're walking, you're getting ready to walk inside. You look out of the corner of your left eye. And you can see Icky and someone that you faintly recognize. You think their name started with an R. Um, kind of looking each other deep in the eyes, sitting in a dark alleyway on a bench together. They're both sitting down, kind of turned toward each, toward, towards each other and looking deeply into each other's eyes. And you said I faintly recognize this person? You, you faintly recognize the person that Icky's sitting with. You think their name starts with an R. Interesting. I'm gonna kind of laugh under my breath and um, nudge Tanfin and gesture in their direction. What do you think they're talking about? I don't know, but trust me, I, I know attraction when I see it in at least one of them's got it. <laughs> At least one. That's that's an intense eye contact. Right? Right? And then you hear the headmistress starting to check the mic as you see them get up and you kind of both slip inside real quick to avoid being looked at. Uh, by Icky. Uh, and you see Tam is like, oh, uh, well, here's a spot over here. You want to come sit over here? Yeah, let's sit there. Alright. Let's see. Um, and as you're kind of sitting there, um, everyone kind of gets into their seats, and you can see this huge auditorium spread out. The headmistress walks up to the microphone and says, <clears throat> Good morning, everyone. I am Headmistress Ilmaro. And I would like to extend a warm welcome to all of you to Vaith University. We are thrilled to have you all here today and hope that you will find our institution to be a welcoming and inspiring place to learn and grow. As the head of this esteemed university, I am committed to providing our students with the best possible education and resources, as well as creating a supportive and inclusive environment that encourages personal and academic growth. At Vaith University, we believe that education should be a transformative experience that prepares our students to succeed in an ever-changing world. Whether you are a new student, a returning student, or a member of our esteemed faculty and staff, we value your presence here today and hope that you will find our community to be a place where you can thrive. 
Our faculty is made up of renowned experts in their fields, and our facilities are state-of-the-art, providing our students with the resources they need to excel in their studies. We also pride ourselves on our commitment to diversity, equity, and inclusion, and we strive to create a safe and welcoming space for all members of our community. We believe that by embracing our differences, we can learn from one another and create a more just and equitable society. Willow Blackspark. Everyone else is quiet and unmoving. The headmistress looks at you. You have been given a duty. It's yours to choose whether or not you'll do it. But I success. I, I success is what I perceive in your future. Now more than ever we need the carries. It's been a long time. A long, long time since Vittore has seen them. Do not fail. For we are in a time of great, great change. And we... Well, things will be different this year, as everyone kind of resumes what they were doing. And I trust that you all will stay safe and do well. So once again, I welcome you all to Vaith University, and I encourage you to take full advantage of the opportunities that are available to you here. Whether it is through our academic programs, our research initiatives, or our extracurricular activities, I am confident that you will find your time here to be fulfilling, enriching, and rewarding. Thank you. Each of you may please head to the table that is signified with the letter of your last name to receive your dorm room assignments as the mic cuts off. <sighs> well, it's another boring orientation. I thought it'd be more exciting than that, Willow. Yep. That was real boring. <sighs> well, I'm heading over to the D's if you're going to head to the B's. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm heading to the bees. That's that's my last name. I'm glad you remember. <laughs> uh, just let me know if you need anything. Uh, I'll be around. Thanks, Tanfin. Yeah, sure. See ya. Um, Are you... Do I see McKenna anywhere? Um, you don't see McKenna immediately. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna head to the M table instead mm -hmm. and see if I can find her and make sure that she finds her dorm room okay. Mm -hmm. You see, uh, McKenna kind of over in the, uh, over at the, in, in the waiting in the line. It's like, no, uh, hey, Willow. Hey, are you, are you doing okay? Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I, I signed up for the uh, I signed up for the the chess club, the math club, and the uh, the um and the um. Well, I'll tell you about it later. So you found all your people, did you? <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I think so. I hope so. How about you? Did you find your people? I found I found people absolutely i i signed up for the book club and um i think i'm gonna convince mom and dad to host a, a charity event for for the pride organization here i thought you hated those charity events didn't you make a whole stink about the last one they did for public works okay, li listen uh there was uh mckenna uh we're yeah yeah i did but this is different I mean, like, logistically, it's not. I mean, it's the exact same thing. It's a, it's a charity ball. It's an event. Like, unless you're going to, like, plan it to be different, I don't see what kind of variables would have changed. It's, uh, well, um, okay, listen, McKenna, okay. Mm -hmm. My friend, uh, sister of mine, here's mm -hmm. the thing. Yeah. Sometimes people have other people that they like more than others. Mm-hmm. Um, and then 
the wires in your brain get just like a little bit crossed. There are no um, wires in your brain. Your brain's actually made of organic material. Unless you're at Warforged, then there are wires in your brain. Okay, I'm not explaining this very well. But the long and short of it is that I'm going to convince mom and dad to host a charity ball for the Pride organization. Is there, is there like, somebody who's got, like, some kind of sorceress or a cauldron-born power that's causing the synaptics in your brain to misfire? I mean, like, like, is that what you're getting at? Um, something like that, but it's nothing nefarious. Don't you no, worry. So, like, so, like, so it's like an accidental, like, like, like being around this person short, shortens, shortens your brain. Yes. Okay. Yep. And yet you still want to be around them? I do. Yep. Kind of slides back. It's like, I know, I know. <laughs> Who is it? I think I think Nyx was over and said that it, that you enjoy pain or whatever. But like, oh jeez, why were you listening to that? I mean, I was getting some orange juice from the fridge. Y'all were sitting out in the backyard talking, and with the door open. I just heard it. Um, that has has nothing to do with this. So, um, pretend, maybe pretend you didn't hear that. Um, and also, don't tell mom and dad. Deal? I mean, Deal. I mean I'm mean, i not I'm not really good at pretending. It's not really my forte. I much rather deal with logic and what's real. Are you asking me to just completely forget it? Because I don't really have selective memory. I can't just, like, delete it from my brain. I, no, my, my, McKenna, um... Mm -hmm. So you're, you know how to find your dorm room? You're okay? You've got your clubs yeah. lined up? Oh, yeah, yeah. I've already completely mapped out where all the classes are, where each of the buildings are, and where each everything is. I mean, I'm pretty good at seeing fourth dimensionally, so, like, I figured it out pretty quickly. All right, perfect. I'm, I'm meeting a bunch of people... Um, for ice cream after. Um, did you want to join us? I mean, I don't know if that's really a good idea. We're gonna we're gonna have like entrance exams and stuff like that, and like like a lot. There hasn't been a whole lot of research on exactly the effects of sweets and cold cold treats when it comes to how well your brain works. Maybe I should just stick to the healthy brain food. Right. You get your healthy brain food. Check mm -hmm. in with me via cell stone uh, tonight mm -hmm. before bed. And, um... Okay. And if you need some healthy brain food, I'm planning on baking some Nutri-Loaf when I get back to the dorms. I would love a slice of your Nutri-Loaf. Mm-hmm. All right. I'm gonna go now. Yeah. And I'll and, see uh, you later. Be careful around that person that short circuits your brain, Willow. Selling, uh, yelling across the thing. Willow's gonna face palm. Um, and I, I'm going to walk over to the B table and get in line. Right. Um, as you're waiting in line, um, it's pretty slow going. Um, as you get to the front and you see this young man with a in strap um, beard, uh, kind of really thin, uh, with a eye fade black hair that's kind of sitting high atop his head. Uh, he has a crow that is sitting on a skull beside his uh, his table, and he's looking through the. Uh, the, the tablet's kind of laying out um, who is uh, in which dorm. And uh, he looks up, and he's in this kind of brownish, dark brown um, coat and this uh, white waistcoat buttoned up to the top with a black tie. Uh, and he looks up, and you see these like, gleaming black eyes. And he looks at you and says, uh, So, you must be Willow, Blacksmark? Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's me. I am Professor Yo Corvus, uh, Professor of Drama. 
I will get your dorm room assignment here in a second. Are you excited to be here? I am. I I think it's gonna be I think it's gonna be a lot of fun. Are you interested in taking new drama classes? What what are you majoring in? Well, I I don't I don't have a major. Um mm-hmm. I I am I did sign up for, for theater appreciation though, so Oh, so you probably have that class with me then. It'll be good to see you there, Professor. Absolutely. Okay. Here is your dorm room. Here's your keys here. Alright, do you have any questions for me at all? Nothing off the top of my head. Alright. So it looks like you're in room 303 here. Room 303, dorm room number C. All right. There's your keys and one extra key. And I presume you know how to get to the silver room? Yeah, no problem. I got it. All right. Well, feel free to reach out to me if you need anything, okay, Willow? Absolutely. As he works on to the next person in the line. Uh, you slip off and slip outside. Um, it's pretty bright and sunny. Uh, you can see off in the distance, you can see um, Benjamin Lane and uh, Brock Kurdek throwing a blood rush ball around near the dorm room. Uh, near uh, near the Bristleback dorm room. Uh, and off in the distance, you can see Silver Edge. Uh, so, you start heading over that way. Um, do you wait for anybody or do you do anything on your way there? Um, I would like to, um, can I, is, is Icky still over there with the nameless other person? No, no, Icky's, Icky's Um, gone by this point. Um, as I walk to the Silver Edge dorm, I would like to kind of discreetly (laughs) investigate the, um, other light posts to see if any of the other ones have this sword insignia on them. And as you're walking through, every single light post, every single last one in the university ward has that same sigil on it. Okay. Hmm. Well, that's bothersome. And you reach the entrance to the Silver Edge dorms. Beauty. Um, so, see that the the Silver Edge dorms, uh, you've got the big, big um, open doors kind of kicked open with uh, door stops in them right now. You can see that there's a group of people that are hanging out in the common area. Uh, there is the elevator that is kind of rising up to the upper floors uh, and it kind of is in this S shape so like going left you would walk down the hallway and then hook a right and then going right you would walk down the hallway and hook a right Um, and there are stairs at the end of each hallway as well so you could walk to the end of the hallway and take the stairs up or you could take the elevator up Uh, Willow's going to take the elevator Alright. Um, so you hop in and you the doors closed and you see the numbers. You see there is a B, one, two, three, four, and then there's the symbol on another button. The sword symbol? Yep. Um I'm gonna swear under my breath and hit the sword button. Um, you hit the sword button, and as soon as you do, you feel the entire elevator drop. It's extremely fast. Holy and then, shit. And then stop abruptly, and then purple lights kind of flicker on as the doors open. And you see the same exact room as before. You see the stone all the way pushed back, extremely old. Obviously, in contrast to the, uh, elevator in its modern-esque architecture. 
you can see the purple torches lit on either side, and you can see the statue at the end. But this time, the sword isn't pushed into the ground. The sword is placed in front in a deflecting position. As if, like, to deflect a incoming blade or energy attack. Um, I'm not even going to step out of the elevator. I'm just going to gonna shake my head, say, oh, hell no, and punch the number three. Right. Punch number three, and the door is closed, and you feel it boot up really quickly. And then the lights change, flicker from purple back to normal white lights. Uh, it is bright for a minute because it like burns when the colors change that drastically. Uh, mm -hmm. And then, and then, as you just feel it rise softly and stop to the third floor, and the door goes ding and opens. Uh, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna step out, um, muttering curse words under my breath. Of course, the fucking. Of course, the fucking dream wasn't a dream, and of course, the fucking dream is now under my damn feet. Uh, of and I had to be given the fucking, I had to be given the task, like world saving task. I don't want to save the fucking world. I just want to go to fucking university. Fuck. You get all the way over to room three hundred three, and the door is already open. Uh, I'm gonna poke my head in. Uh, you poke your head in, and you can see um, someone that you are vaguely familiar with sitting on the couch. You can see Zeke Rodon, uh, a friend of your parents. Although, it's not really exactly the best way to put it. More like the child that they hoped that they could adopt and would always disappear. Zeke, right? Um, your name. Sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm an adult now. They can't adopt me. Um, I have nothing to do with that. Oh, and you must be my dorm room mate. Yeah, I'm your room three hundred three, right? I'm not. Yeah. Lost. Yeah. No. Yeah. I think, I think you're in C over here. Everybody else is already here. Um, Blaze is out, but room's packed up, and, well, Shithead McGee's over there, and she points to another door, a room door number A, or door letter A, and you can see some very intricate leather bags with rose thorns and bramble kind of painted onto it by hand, and these just pristine-looking matching bags. Um... And each one is stamped with the uh, the symbol of the Autumn Court. You recognize these bags. You 100% recognize these bags because these bags, unfortunately, have been dropped inside your house more times than you care to have had happen. These bags are Fen's bags. Of course they are. He, uh, they, they're, they're rooming with us as well. Okay. Yeah, yeah, four of us per room. I mean, we got a bigger blueprint, so like, it's not, not too bad, you know. Yeah. And looks like they really keep to themselves, so not too big of a deal. Really fucking better. Why you? Do you know fair? Uh. Yeah, I... Fen, uh, we're friends. Just friends. Oh, yeah. Just friends. Yep. Just friends. But okay. you! Where have... What have you been up to? Um... I mean... Other than not getting adopted? I mean, it depends on who you ask, I guess. Like... If you mean... If you ask... If you ask the cops, I've just been, you know, living on the streets. But if you ask somebody else, I've been pretty busy. Somebody else, huh? Yeah. Right. Uh, so this this room's mine. Yep. Yeah. Over there. See. Uh, yeah. I think that I think it's all cleaned out. So you should be good. 
Oh, and uh, I do have um, I do have a moonstone over here hooked up to the TV. If you want a game. Oh, that'd be that'd be wicked. Uh, later, I'm gonna gonna get myself settled in first. I think. Yeah. Sure. Um, um, and you kind of get settled. You get heading into your room. Um, you know that your your mom this morning before 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 leaving had left uh, a little um, little device um, built by a family friend who, uh, when you click it, it will transport all of your packed bags from and boxes from your room directly into this room. And you kind of pull it out of your coat pocket and have that set for you whenever whenever you're ready. Um. Yeah, I'm gonna just kind of glance around the glance around the space, take a look at the closet, look out the window, see what kind of view I have. Uh, you're able to look down directly into the Vaith U Songbird's Nest, the stadium. The aviary arena. Not bad. Not bad at all. Um, and then I'm going to push the button. All right. As you push the button, you see boxes poof into your room. It's one at a time. Poof, 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 poof. And then each box begins to unpack and things start to begin shooting around, flying around as they unpack and hang themselves up in almost the exact configuration that your room was previously at your house um except that rather than a bed it's just a giant nest of pillows and blankets as as, as you say that aloud the the bed disappears and it's just the pillows and blankets perfect it's my willow nest and that's just where i sleep and that's fine um i'm gonna pull out my pull out my cell stone and just send a quick text over to McKenna just to make sure that she's gotten all settled in. Um, she sends a, she sends a picture, uh, back of the, uh, neutral loaf coming out of the oven. And it looks like this, it looks like a, uh, like a lumpy fruit cake with mostly, um, like dark rye and nuts and dried berries. It does not look good whatsoever. Um, I'm going to reply and say, can't wait to try a bite. She just sends back the thumbs up emoji. Kid of many words, that one. Uh, you get a ding from Holly saying, heading over to the ice creamery now. See you there. Um, I'm going to leave my room um, as I send off a quick see you there to Holly. Um, Mm -hmm. And I'm going to glance over to Zeke. As you kind of glance up from your phone after sending that message to Holly, you bump straight into somebody. And that's where we'll end your session. Hey! Who did (laughs) I bump into? You know who you bumped into. Fucking hell.